Support Wrestle Talk. Support each other. While 2020 is definitely a year humanity's collective consciousness will want to forget, it's important to remember those professional wrestlers lost to the great Hall of Fame in the sky. I'm Mr. Davis from WrestleTalk, here to look back and celebrate the lives of the wrestlers who passed away this year. Pampero Furpo, January 9th, 2020, 89 years old. Juan Cachmanian debuted as a pro wrestler in 1953, where he went through various names before he settled on Pampero Firpo. As a nod to famous boxer Luis Angel Firpo, Pampero became one of the pioneers of the hardcore style, often wrestling as a heel in territories like Michigan, Texas, and Hawaii. Firpo also competed briefly for WWE in the 70s, where he notably challenged Pedro Morales for the world championship twice. While his body of work stands on its own, Firpo will perhaps best be known as the inspiration for the character of Randy Savage, as Firpo's promo style heavily influenced the Mitchell Men's presentation. I'm sorry about that impression. La Parca Dos, January 11th, 2020, 54 years old. This entry is actually pretty complicated. La Parca 2 isn't the La Parca most fans know from WCW, but the man who would inherit the mantle and, in true wrestling fashion, feud over it. This La Parca, Jesus Escoboza, began wrestling in 1987 as Bello Sexy, working for Lucha Libre promotion AAA. After a series of name changes, Escoboza gained prominence as Caris La Momia, Caris the Mummy. But when the original La Parca began working for WCW, Escoboza was given the name La Parca Jr. After the original La Parca left AAA in 2003, legal action awarded the promotion ownership to his name, a gimmick they then gave to La Parca Jr., who became one of the most popular stars in the promotion for years. In 2010, the original La Parca returned to AAA as L.A. Park to feud with Escoboza in a passing of the torch moment. Rocky Johnson, January 15th, 2020. 75 years old. One of the biggest and most influential names to leave us this year was Rocky Johnson. Beginning his wrestling career in 1964, Johnson competed for the National Wrestling Alliance for almost two decades, wrestling at an incredibly high level with world championship matches against the likes of Terry Funk and Harley Race. In 1982, Johnson joined the WWF, where he and Tony Atlas became the first African-American WWF Tag Team Champions. He retired from active competition in 1991, but would make sporadic appearances going forward, especially after the debut of his son, some guy named Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You've probably never heard of him. Rocky Johnson would be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2008 by his son. Black Demon, April 13th, 2020, 39 years old. An 11-year veteran, Black Demon, whose real name was Roberto Carrillo, made his debut in 2009 in the Sonaro region of Mexico. He had won the Pendragon Rojo Cup at a local indie promotion in February 2020 in what was considered his career highlight. Howard Finkel, April 16th, 2020, 69 years old. The longest tenured WWE employee and the greatest ring announcer of all time, bar none. Howard Finkel created a legacy through his decades-long career, becoming the voice of several generations in the process. Debuting as a Madison Square Garden ring announcer in 1977, the Fink soon found himself as the lead ring announcer of the WWWF. From being the man behind the name WrestleMania to his now legendary a new cool. I'm again so sorry about the impressions. Finkel's impact on WWE on and off camera cannot be overstated. As time went on, Finkel's workload began to decrease. With the introduction of Lillian Garcia and Tony Chimmel, the Fink began announcing at only pay-per-views, but soon even that would be a rarity. Eventually, Finkel was used only to introduce the Hall of Fame class each year of WrestleMania. In 2009, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame himself, and he continued to ring announce sporadically until his final appearance in 2018. Jack Lotz, April 18th, 2020, 86 years old. Jack Lotz worked as one of WWE's top officials during the 80s, refereeing many iconic matches and events, including Hulk Hogan vs. The Iron Sheik, where Hogan won his first WWE Championship. Lotz also worked on the first three WrestleManias, the highlight of a refereeing career spanning over three decades. 
Shad Gaspard, May 17th, 2020, 39 years old. Shad Gaspard is best remembered for his crime time tag team in WWE with JTG. While the stereotypical gimmick would likely not fly today, the duo made the most of it with their charm and charisma. They had two stints with WWE from 2006 to 7 and again from 2008 to 10. After the team broke up in March 2010, Gaspard was released by WWE but would go on to work in Hollywood, appearing in such major movies as Get Hard and Birds of Prey while also performing the motion capture for Kratos in God of War. Hannah Kimura, May 23rd, 2020, 22 years old. At only 22 years of age, Kimura was one of the best women's wrestlers in the world and was one of the brightest stars in wrestling's future. Debuting in 2016, Kimura was trained by Wrestle One and competed in the promotion for three years. After announcing her departure from Wrestle One in 2019, Kimura joined the biggest women's wrestling promotion in the world, Stardom. Despite only being in the promotion for a year, she won several championships and awards during her time there, as well as wrestling in the the first women's match at the Tokyo Dome since 2002 at January's Wrestle Kingdom show. Danny Havoc, May 31st, 2020, 34 years old. One of the biggest deathmatch stars of his generation, Grant Birkeland wrestled as Danny Havoc for Combat Zone Wrestling from 2005 to 2017. Appearing in the Vice docuseries The Wrestlers, Havoc showed the more thoughtful side of the business, with the episode culminating with his retirement match in 2017. His style may not have been for everyone, but major stars like John Moxley and Sammy Callahan paying their respects to him after his passing showed just how much Havoc meant to his community. Mr. Wrestling 2 Johnny Walker, June 10th, 2020, 85 years old. Johnny Walker began wrestling in 1955, being trained by Tony Morelli and former NWA world champion Pat O'Connor. After a decade of wrestling under his given name, Walker retired for three years before returning as the Grappler. This went on until 1972, when a semi-retired Walker was given the moniker of Mr. Wrestling 2. This was the most successful part of his career, becoming a top draw in the South and United States as a whole, where, fun fact, US President Jimmy Carter named Mr. Wrestling 2 as his favorite during that period. Walker would work for Mid-South during the early 80s, helping to introduce Magnum TA as his protege. This ultimately led to a feud between them before Walker left the territory in 1984. Walker continued to work until he retired in 1990 before briefly resurfacing in Hawaii, training Mr. Wrestling 3, Steve Carino, in 2007. Mark Rollable Rocco, July 31st, 2020, 69 years old. Rollable Rocco, whose real name was Mark Hussey, was one of the pioneers of the junior heavyweight style in the 1970s. Debuting in 1976 in Britain and standing only 5 foot 8 tall, Rocco was very small for a wrestler at the time, but he became known as one of the sport's best technical wizards. In 1981, he wrestled a man who he would become forever linked, Satoru Sayama. The two wrestled in the UK with Sayama using the name Sammy Lee. Seeing their chemistry, New Japan Pro Wrestling booked Sayama and wrestling as Tiger Mask to wrestle Rocco, who became known as Black Tiger. Their matches were incredibly dynamic and helped show the world that wrestling wasn't just the preserve of heavyweights. A heart condition forced him to retire in 1991. Mitch Ryder, August 5th, 48 years old. If you ask any top independent wrestler from the 2000s, odds are they worked on a show with Mitch Ryder. A veteran of the indie scene, Ryder made his debut in 1990 under the name Mitch Bell. He would get some exposure working as an enhancement talent for WCW against people like Mick Foley and Rick Rude, but those who saw him would remember him best for his appearances on the indies. While he wrestled for various independent promotions, his time with IWA Mid-South and Chikara is where he'll be most remembered, working with current stars such as Chris Hero, Drew Gulak, and Lindsay Dorado. Kamala, August the 9th, 70 years old. 
One of the most memorable characters in WWE history is the Ugandan giant Kamala. James Harris made his debut in 1978 as Sugar Bear Harris before going on to wrestle for various promotions under various names. He's best remembered for his time in WWE though, and his number of stints with the company. First in 1984, then again from 1986 to 7 where he wrestled Hulk Hogan for the World Championship, and again from 1992 to 1993, where he was managed by Kim Chi and Harvey Whippleman, and feuded with The Undertaker at SummerSlam 1992 in what many consider his most memorable rivalry. Xavier, August 16th, 42 years old. John Badoa Jr. was one of the early stars of the independent scene, wrestling as Xavier. He debuted in the mid-90s before rising to prominence in the upstart promotion Ring of Honor in 2002, where he became the second ever ROH World Champion by defeating Loki at Unscripted on September 21st, 2002. Xavier would hold the title for six months before dropping it to Samoa Joe. This would ultimately be the peak of his career, but Xavier would go on to wrestle until his retirement in 2011. There were plans for him to return in a match against Jay Lethal in March 2020, but the pandemic put a halt to that. Bob Armstrong, August 27th, 80 years old. The patriarch of one of the most talented wrestling families around, Bullet Bob Armstrong was an all-time great in the southern United States. Real name Joseph James, Armstrong debuted as a wrestler in 1960 and wrestled frequently for the NWA. As the top babyface in states such as Alabama and Georgia, Armstrong unsuccessfully challenged NWA world champion Jack Briscoe in 1974. Armstrong went into semi-retirement after 1988, making sporadic appearances in smaller promotions. He would resell surface as the commissioner for Smoky Mountain Wrestling in the mid-90s and would later make several appearances for TNA. Amazingly, Armstrong wrestled occasional matches until 2019 when he had his last match at the age of 79. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2011. Road Warrior Animal September 22nd, 60 years old the Road Warriors are one of the most iconic, legendary, and revered tag teams of all time. Half of that duo was Road Warrior Animal, Joseph Laurinaitis. Debuting as The Road Warrior in 1982, Laurinaitis was soon named Animal and teamed with Hawk by Paul Ellering. Their look and charisma made them one of the most successful acts in wrestling during the 80s. Animal and Hawk decimated their competition, having memorable feuds with the Midnight Express and the Powers of Pain before leaving WCW in 1990. While their subsequent runs in WWE and WCW never recaptured the same magic they had in the 80s, Hawk and Animal remained an all-time great team. Animal would make sporadic appearances for TNA and WWE from 2002 onward, even winning the WWE Tag Team Championship with Heidenreich in 2005. Animal, alongside Hawk and Paul Ellering, was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2011. Ryan Smile, October 14th, 31 years old. Ryan Smile broke into the wrestling business in 2006, appearing for various independent companies in the UK and working his way up larger promotions such as OTT and Rev Pro. Smile won the Rev Pro Undisputed British Cruiserweight Championship in November 2017. At just 31 years old, there is no telling how big of a star Smile could have been. Remember, if you're struggling, please visit our Support Each Other resources page in the video description below. Tracy Smothers October 28th, 58 years old. Making his debut in 1982, Smothers wrestled primarily in the southern United States throughout his career. Teaming with Steve Armstrong as the Southern Boys was one of the biggest breaks in Smothers' career, reaching the heights of WCW and feuding with teams like the Midnight Express and the fabulous Freebirds. Smothers saw his biggest single success in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, where he feuded with the dirty white boy Tony Anthony over the heavyweight title. Smothers had a memorable run in ECW sandwiched in between two very unmemorable stints in WWE, but his later career should be best remembered for the impact he had on younger talent. As a wrestler who continued to work on the independent scene in the 90s and early noughties, Smothers was one of the few still active performers who had been in the territory system, and he provided advice and wisdom to future stars such as CM Punk, Eddie Kingston, Ricochet, and Edge. Pat Patterson, December 2nd, 
79 years old. Patterson debuted in 1958, wrestling in his hometown of Montreal, Canada. It would not be until 1965, though, that he would begin the peak of his career, wrestling for Roy Shire in San Francisco, where he was so good he was pushed to the top of the promotion despite Shire being a massive homophobe. Patterson's words, not mine. Big Time Wrestling was where he formed the Blonde Bombers alongside Ray Stevens, considered by many to be one of the best tag teams of all time. Patterson would go on to work for various promotions throughout the world, including WWE, where he was crowned the company's inaugural Intercontinental Champion, before retiring from active competition in 1985. His in-ring career was one of the best in history, but his work behind the scenes in WWE was perhaps even more impactful on the business as a whole. He was Vince McMahon's right-hand man, first pushing stars like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels to the top of the company, then being one of the chief architects of the Attitude Era, mentoring The Rock, and of course, inventing arguably the greatest gimmick match of all time, the Royal Rumble. Zeus, Tom Lister, December 10th, 62 years old. While not a wrestler per se, Tommy Lister is perhaps best known for his work in the wrestling world. For WWE's first ever film, No Holds Barred in 1989, the promotion come upstart movie studio needed someone to play the antagonist Zeus to Hulk Hogan's hero. And as that was WWE, in the 80s, they cast Tom Lister, an actor who had never trained to wrestle and then booked him to wrestle in three matches as his on-screen character. The most remembered was the main event of SummerSlam 1989, where he teamed with Randy Savage to take on Hogan and Brutus Beefcake. Not to be outdone though, WCW brought in Lister for their infamous Tower of Doom match in 1996, this time wrestling under the name Z Gangster. Away from wrestling, Lister was an accomplished actor, appearing in films such as Friday, The Dark Knight, and Zootopia. Rest in power, all. If you enjoyed this video, please give WrestleTalk a subscribe for daily wrestling lists, news, and reviews, and comment down below with your favorite memories of the people featured on this list. Click the videos on screen now for more wrestling fun. I've been Mr. Davis, and that was wrestling.